Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to 7th Street. You must, you've got to get to Dunwich. You must reclose those gates. I gotta say, I'm pretty excited for today's episode. It's not so much that people don't reference Lucio Fulci's The Gates of Hell, it's that it's not referenced enough. Honestly, in my opinion, I believe that Fulci's The Gates of Hell trilogy is one of the best horror franchises of all time. So let's just jump right into it. Right from the opening scene in this movie, you just know that this is going to be an unnerving, atmospheric ride. I really love all of these establishing shots of the cemetery. It's got a really gothic feel to it, doesn't it? It's almost like a hammer film in a way. This here is Father Thomas, a Dunwich clergyman, a good man, a man of goo. Goo hoo! It's never really made clear why Father Thomas hangs himself, but the suicide apparently opens up the gateway to hell, allowing the dead to rise up from their graves. Meanwhile, in New York City, Mary Woodhouse, played by the always great Catriona McCall, dies from fright after experiencing the traumatic vision of Father Thomas killing himself while engaging in a seance. This is what 30 seconds into Netflix and Chill looks like at my house. I'm afraid Mary's dead. No! So anyway, the cops come to haul off the body and are immediately convinced that Mary Woodhouse must have died from an overdose of the devil's lettuce. Where's the stash down the toilet? You don't deserve any help. You're a comic book version, Sergeant. A few months back, I actually saw this on the big screen at the Hollywood Theater in Portland, Oregon. And every time the detectives started ranting and raving about how Mary must have overdosed on marijuana, like the entire crowd burst into laughter, mainly because we were all stoned out of our minds. Well, the good news is, this is a Fulci film, so Catriona McCall isn't dead for long. The bad news is, she was buried pretty hastily. But all is well, news reporter Peter, one of our lead characters, is on the case. And look, he even brought his trusty pickaxe. Smash, smash, smash! <laughs> this has got to be one of the tensest moments in horror history. Every time that pickaxe comes through the coffin lid, I wince. And I've seen this movie more times than I can count. After rescuing our lead protagonist from certain doom, Peter and Mary decide to go back to visit the psychic Teresa, probably for some more of her dank stash, but mostly to get answers about the visions that Mary witnessed. The plot isn't overly complicated here. The death of Father Thomas somehow opened a door through which the dead will pass into our world, and apparently it will remain permanent on All Saints Day, which just happens to be a few days away. Well, that's convenient. The movie then cuts to Jerry, a psychiatrist, and his neurotic patient Sandra. The movie does this quite a bit. It's not really a linear storyline. It's almost like a compilation of vignettes that take place throughout the town of Dunwich. I mean, they all sort of cross paths at the end, but for the most part, the movie just jumps around. Jerry and Sandra have the best storyline in my opinion. That good old fashioned Italian misogyny really shines through in these scenes. You're nurturing a pet neurosis, that's all. Like about 70% of the female population of this country. Once again for the women in the back! That was just a joke. Stop writing the comments, please. I was just joking. Why did you choose the topic of incest? When I was eight years old, I wanted to marry my father. I guess all girls that age want to marry their fathers. Anyway, I got over it pretty quickly. He was a drunk. Is that the only reason that you're not still in love with your father? Are you sure it doesn't have something to do with the fact that he's your father? Uh-oh, a couple that we've never met making out in a car? 
at night in a horror movie? Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. After locking eyes with Father Thomas, homegirl cries blood, pukes up her guts, and rips her boyfriend's scalp off. God damn! I actually remember seeing this scene before I actually ever saw the full movie. Back in the early 2000s, there was this website called deadzombie.com. I don't know if anyone remembers deadzombie.com, but this guy would post little highlights from different horror films, and the puke gut scene was one of them. I remember being so fascinated by it, mostly because of how good the effect looks. This has honestly gotta be one of my favorite gore effects. Uh, well, screw that, off to the next vignette. One of my favorite Italian character actors makes a small appearance in this movie, Giovanni Lombardo Radice. No, his last name is not pronounced Radis. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Mood616. He plays this dim-witted homeless dude who likes to bang blow-up dolls in an abandoned building. So, as previously stated, the gates of hell are now open, and zombie-like apparitions begin to run amok all across the town of Dunwich. A lot of these scenes are genuinely terrifying. Watching this movie alone at night actually gives me the creeps. Alright, let's talk about some zombies. The zombies in this film are so fucking cool. The makeup looks great, and it seems like the actors portraying them really committed to the role. Especially this girl here. I fucking love her physicality. <laughs> She's, a. Uh actually pretty fucking terrifying. Speaking of terrifying, I gotta say, probably my favorite scene in this movie is the part where Sandra discovers a dead body from the local funeral home in her kitchen. She then calls her psychiatrist Jerry to come over and comfort her, and when they go check on it again, the body is gone. There's this great shot where Jerry tries to calm down the poor woman by sitting her in a chair. Then the camera pans down to reveal the feet of the dead old woman standing right behind them. The ending of this movie is truly some of the best horror moments put to celluloid. Our four heroes join forces and then rush to the cemetery to open the crypt where the priest is supposed to lie. Upon discovering that the body of Father Thomas is missing, the group ventures further into the crypt, only to find themselves at the literal pathway to hell. As the bodies of the dead begin to rise, our heroes find themselves trapped in a hopeless situation. <laughs> Oh, I was just beginning to like him. What are you doing, you dummy? Don't you watch zombie movies? You gotta hit him in the head. Uh, oh. Just before being ripped apart by the living dead, our two remaining heroes stumble upon the Father Thomas zombie. Oh no, not the eye bleeding again. Just stop looking into their eyes for God's sakes. <laughs> or impale them with a cross, either way. And with that, the evil has been vanquished. The gates of hell are now closed, I guess. Is that really all it took? Just finding the lead zombie and stabbing him in the stomach? The devil's plans for a hell on earth were pretty easily thwarted. Really, Lucifer, I expected more from you. Seriously, the devil is like the Carmelo Anthony of the afterlife. You have an unbelievable skill set, all the potential to rule the world. Why are you so easily beat? So Jerry and Mary return to the surface world, just as little John John and the cops arrive on the scene. Thanks for all the backup, Dunwich PD. 
And then something interesting happens. <laughs> That's how the movie ends. So many theories and rumors have surfaced about this weird ending, the most common of which is that Fulci and his editor accidentally spilled coffee on some of the film, so they had to re-edit this ending. I don't know how true that is, but I sure like to believe it. If you ask me, the ending of this movie is quite simple. Mary and Jerry, oh god, those fucking character names, didn't actually shut the gates of hell in time. I mean, it was already All Saints Day before they ever went down into the crypt. Even though they found the Father Thomas zombie and killed him, they still didn't close the gates in time. As John John runs towards them, our heroes realize that they're still in hell. The film is intended to be a cinematic nightmare of sorts, and like many nightmares, it ends suddenly, without any explanation or resolution. Or maybe Lucio Fulci was just trying to fuck with us. Look, it's no secret that I love Lucio Fulci, and this just very well be my favorite of his films. The creepy gothic atmosphere, the pounding synth soundtrack, the impressive gore effects, the stylish camera work, everything about this movie is damn near flawless. Sure, the story is a little muddy, but honestly, I think that it works in the movie's favor. This is supposed to be a nightmare come to life. It's stylish and bold. It's a goddamn work of art. Fulci lives, and he'd want you to reference this film. That's the whole story. My God in heaven. 